Okay, first of all, I wanted to have a little fun today. And I wanted to show you guys something really kind of cool, in my opinion. Now, some of you guys out there may have a passion for blades as much as I do. So I wanted to kind of show how to do a basic rotation. So you have here a blade. Take your finger under here, rotate, and grab. So that's all it takes in order to get it to a position like this. And this is good for, it's pretty much a slashing knife. It's not really good for throwing or anything. So it's very good for kind of that. If you want to get it back up, once again, finger, rotate, So, that's just something I wanted to show, just for SNGs. So, today I wanted to talk about the infamous bathroom. Now, for a lot of people in the transgender society, bathroom is a thing of terror. So much so that people will actually have bladder-related problems if they're transgender for holding it. Um, couple suggestions first when it comes to the bathroom is try to put yourself in situations where there'll be unisex or family style bathrooms and um, I know Walmart and uh, Target Target's really good um, for having family bathrooms um, so I guess the first question, and the question most often I get when it comes to bathroom issues is, when should I start using the female bathroom? And I know how hard it is and how awkward it is to try to schedule your life and your activities in public around your bladder. It's kind of like you're a prisoner of your urinary tract. It's not exactly a fun way to live. Um, okay, so first of all, definitely comes down to how clear your face is. Um, the second thing it comes down to is how society perceives and treats you. And sometimes maybe you need to get an indicator, do a little shopping, you know, ma'am. Anything else? Do you need? Do you? Are you ladies okay? You know, and I know that's hard too because if you're as skeptical as I am, of course they're going to say, "Ma'am, they want my money, and they, you know, I'm dressing as a woman or whatever." So of course they're going to treat me this way. Yeah, it's not that they really see me that way; it's just that they want my money. Um. Yeah, I was really bad about that one. Not so much anymore. But, yeah. So, yeah, it really comes down, in my opinion, to how society perceives you. And take your indicators of where you should go from there. Um, now, I did have one really asinine comment about bathroom etiquette and whatnot, and when women should use the bathroom. And I found this surprising because it actually came from a post-op transsexual, well, claimed post-op post transsexual, that states that women should use the women's bathroom when they're a woman. In other words, vagina should use the vagina room, and penises should use the penis room. Now, for me personally, I find this incredibly ridiculous. And when I asked, well, did you use the vagina room um, all during your post-op transition and she said of course not but she was very passable so there you go that was a hypocritical statement in the first place and it's true if you're very passable you shouldn't use the men's room you're putting your, yourself in an awkward situation and it's just you know it's not worth it the other thing to mention about the bathroom is hopefully and most of you girls aren't this stupid. You know, that women pee sitting down. 
So if you're going into the women's room, your feet should be facing the door, not the the toilet, okay? It, it's, it's not that complicated. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because there was a girl at Morale Crane's group that stated, you know, until she has a vagina, she's going to keep on using the men's room. You know, she has no problem with it. She finds it hilarious. Me, personally, I'd find it very scary that one day someone wouldn't go, Ugh, okay, some cross-dressing faggot, you know, transvestite, transsexual, is using our damn bathroom probably to scope out our penises. We can take care of this. Yeah, I just... I wouldn't put myself in that situation. So that's what I have to say about the bathroom. And since I mentioned, you know, five o'clock shadows briefly, I will reiterate that because I've been getting a lot of questions about laser and whatnot, even though I swear I made a video on this. Maybe I didn't. When it comes to how to find a laser or electrologist, it's really simple. Step one. Get your local phone book. Step two, go in said phone book, look up either electrologist or hair removal. Step three, call up said places, find out their rates and what kind of laser or electrology they use. Now for electrology, I really recommend either a galvanic or a blend. Thermolic, I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that word right. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about how it causes a lot of damage, where um, it'll cause um, pitting and scarring. So go with either galvanic or blend. Um, also, if you have dark pigment, don't go with laser, because laser is specifically targeting the pigment in the hair. So if you have dark skin and dark hair, it's going to fry your skin. Um, also, people ask me, well, how light or dark does my hair have to be in order for laser to work on it? What I was told from my laser hair technician is if you can pluck a hair, put it down on a pillow, and still visibly be able to see that hair, then chances are laser will work for you. As long as you don't have dark pigment in your skin. And then of course it comes to the thing of dark pigment. I would say anything from a mocha to darker would probably be bad. Actually if you're, you know, African American in general, I'd probably recommend electrology. It's just a lot safer, even though it is a bit more time consuming. And of course, they both have their traits, um, you know, their pros and cons. So, okay. This is Ariana Lynn Fails saying, hopefully I won't have to do any more discussion on hair removal. Thank you very much, and you all have a great day.